Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Who Are the Entities podcast. I'm Lewis Ungit, and welcome. Um, this is a new podcast um, in which I'm talking about psychedelics, uh, DMT, other drugs uh, like LSD, ayahuasca, peyote, etc. The premise of this, uh, the title, Who Are the Entities? I talked about this in my, my first uh, podcast before. The premise is that we see when people take DMT, LSD, and other drugs, um, but especially DMT and ayahuasca, DMT is the active ingredient of ayahuasca. When people take that drug, they see entities like an overwhelming. Last time I talked about the percentages, like 94% of people that take ayahuasca or DMT experience entities that they view as real, not like a dream. They come down from the high and they still believe those are true. Atheists see them. Everybody else sees them. Um, and the premise of this podcast is that those entities are not a dream, that those entities are real beings, which, by the way, is something that's echoed by all sorts of people. Uh, Terrence McKenna, who's a kind of a uh, guru in this space, he said the following. Um, he said, this has to, talking about the DMT experience, he says, this has to be taken seriously. In other words, it's only a hallucination thing. That horseshit is just passe. I mean, reality is only a hallucination for crying out loud, haven't you heard? So that takes care of that. It's only a hallucination. What we've got here, folks, is an intelligent entity of some sort that is frantic to communicate with human beings for some reason, end quote. So here he's saying there's something out there, something real that's frantic to communicate with us. And that's what almost everybody says when they take this drug, DMT. And, you know, to some degree, other hallucinogens as well. Um, and th the premise of this podcast is who are they? What are they? So today I wanted to talk about um, how common DMT has become, how, how common ayahuasca has become, um, in addition to the mainstreaming of mushrooms and other uh, psychedelics, but DMT in particular is what I'm going to talk about today. And I'm going to talk about 10 famous users of DMT. One is Miley Cyrus. So big star from a few years ago, still somewhat popular. Um, she talks about uh, the spiritual experience she had on ayahuasca. Um, she talked about interacting with uh, entities. Um, she said she was uh, puking which is a common experience on ayahuasca. People throw up a lot. Um, but when she puked, animals came out of her and she saw animals. So it's, uh, she's one famous and, uh, person that saw entities um, and took DMT. Uh, Will Smith talks about his experience on DMT. Um, and he, or I should say ayahuasca, I believe is what he took, but I'm going to use those terms interchangeably um, throughout this podcast because they, again, the chemical ingredient is the same. Um, so he took ayahuasca and talked about just how it was this life-changing, almost born again experience for him um, where it really made sense of his life. Um, so Will Smith, the giant star, still remains a giant star, obviously has some emotional problems um, as we saw a few weeks ago uh, when he punched Chris Rock in the middle of the Oscars, um, but uh, he has taken ayahuasca. Um, Sting talks about his experiences on ayahuasca, has talked in depth about that. Um, Graham Hancock is a famous author, um, wrote, uh, has written extensively on Mesoamerica. Um, he has uh, taken DMT, not only taken it, he's a giant advocate of it. He's been on Joe Rogan's show. He's been all over the place written books on it. Um, ayahuasca, DMT, he thinks are absolutely prerequisites for everybody to take. And he, he wishes government officials would take it, et cetera. So influential, best-selling author, um, big advocate of DMT. Uh, Paul Simon, who obviously most people know from his music in the 1960s and Simon and Garfunkel, um, incredibly influential musician, um, just a real genius when it comes to singing and songwriting, um, incredibly influential and important, uh, remains influential and important to these day, to this day. Um, he talks about his ayahuasca experience and the entities that he saw while on ayahuasca. Um, Jim Carrey, uh, 
this is a little less documented, but Hollywood Reporter had a story on him where it listed that he was one of the people that had taken ayahuasca. Um, Jim Carrey, obviously, incredibly giant uh, comedian, um, influential in culture, um, et cetera. And so he took ayahuasca. Um, this came out this week, uh, but maybe the best quarterback in the NFL, Aaron Rodgers, um, talked about the fact that he takes ayahuasca and he takes it as he called it a performance enhancing drug, um, that he takes it to improve himself. Um, the language he used in the article I read was like born again language. He said he woke up from the ayahuasca and it was like he had never lived before. He, he woke up and it was like he woke up for the first time. Um, so another guy that walked with the entities, uh, interacted with the entities, um, is the biggest name in football right now, Aaron Rodgers. Mike Tyson, everybody knows Mike Tyson, um, one of the greatest boxers of all time, um, childhood hero for a lot of people, um, still influential kind of in the social media space, um, not really boxing anymore, although he did have an exhibition um, a few months ago. Um, but he is very open about his drug use and ayahuasca is one of them. So here's another guy that has interacted with the entities. Um, Joe Rogan kind of saved him towards the end here. Obviously everybody knows he takes ayahuasca because he talks about it all the time and he has the biggest podcast there is right now. Um, we don't know exactly how many listeners he has, but, um, the number 9 million has been thrown out there, which if you think about that number, that's bigger than Fox News, that's bigger than MSNBC, um, any of those shows put together, right? You, you take some of the biggest networks, they don't get 9 million views for almost anything. And Joe Rogan gets regular listeners of, of in the millions um, and just incredibly influential in society, um, especially among men. And the number of times he promotes ayahuasca is crazy. Like it's almost every show he's talking about ayahuasca. So pretty, pretty insane uh, advocate of ayahuasca in Joe Rogan. And then I saved for the last, um, which is World Economic Forum, um, Davos uh, 2022. Um, these are the, if you're not familiar with the World Economic Forum, it is a gathering of some of the most influential and powerful people in the world. It's a collection of heads of state. So big shots in governments from around the world, including uh, leaders like uh, Justin Trudeau was part of the World Economic Forum. Um, uh, Donald Trump spoke at World Economic Forum. Vladimir Putin has spoken there. Uh, through, yeah, at, you name the world leader and they've been a part of this World Economic Forum. They When they had Davos last year, which is their annual meeting, um, they invited psychedelic shamans um, to show up. And um, it was not necessarily part of Davos, but it was uh, ancillary or a side um, show there at it, at the, at the forum. And um, I thought that was worth bringing up that, you know, we've talked about here just today, um, I've talked about all these influential cultural people, big name comedians, musicians, athletes, podcasters, et cetera. But it goes beyond that. And the real power in the world is now experimenting with psychedelics and DMT and ayahuasca in particular. Um, so it's pretty, pretty shocking. It's pretty mainstream. Now let's go back to my premise. So if almost everybody that takes DMT or ayahuasca experiences is experiences these entities. And if we go back to the Terrence McKenna quote, he said something, he said, what we've got here, folks, is an intelligent entity of some sort that is frantic to communicate with human beings for some reason. And so these entities are frantic to communicate with human beings for some reason. We're taking the psychedelic that allows them to communicate with us. And they're not communicating with drugged out losers in the ghetto or whatever. They're communicating with the most powerful, influential cultural leaders, business leaders, heads of state, um, the most important 
influencers in the world these entities are now in contact with. And so the question, to go back to my question of this whole podcast, the whole point of my question is who are these things? If they're real and if they're successfully talking to all the most important people in our society, who are they and what do they want? And that should be a key question that everyone is asking. And that's something this podcast is going to explore as I go forward. So I'm going to stop there. Those are uh, 10 big names that have taken DMT or ayahuasca. And I hope you enjoyed this podcast. Make sure you like and subscribe. Um, I'm going to be doing regular updates daily, maybe, or at least um, frequently. Um, I'm in the process of publishing a book. If this subject interests you, you can read about it at lewisunget.substack.com. Um, you can follow me on Twitter. I am Lewis U. And I will have updates there on my book. And I hope that you uh, like and subscribe and follow me so that you can buy the book when it comes out because I'm going to go into great detail on who the entities are, what their history is, and where they come from, and what I think they want from us. Um, so thank you so much for listening. And I hope you all have a great day.